spoke he then with words of great power, saying, Thou hast been made free of the halls of Amente. Choose thou thy work among the children of men. Then I spoke, O great master, let me be a teacher of men, leading them onward and upward until they too are lights among men. Freed from the veil of the night that surrounds them, flaming with light that shall shine among men. Spoke to me then the voice, go as yet ye will, so be it decreed. Master are ye of your destiny, free to take or reject at will. Take ye the power, take ye the wisdom, shine as a light among the children of men. Upward then led me the dweller, dwelt I again among the children of men, teaching and showing some of my wisdom, son of the light, a fire among men. Now again I tread the path downward, seeking the light in the darkness of night. Hold ye and keep ye, preserve my record. Guide shall it be to the children of men. And that comes directly from the third tablet, the key of wisdom from the Emerald Tablets. But before we go any further, you know what to do. Please hit that subscribe button and give us a like. We are heavily, heavily, heavily shadow banned on this channel. So anytime you like or leave a comment or share the video, it gets the video out there. And all this information we're sharing here, whether it be historically uncovering things, spiritual talks or shadow work videos, are all important in this journey to ascending. And it's not about me, it's about us. It's about us doing this together, as we're gonna see in the Emerald Tablets. As always, a very, very special thank you to all of our patrons and our producers. If you would like to join our Patreon community, you can find the link down in the description box below. Welcome to Esoteric Atlanta. My name is Bryce, and today on what's kind of a Mystery Monday, we're going to be starting our deep dive into the Emerald Tablets, the Halls of Amente, and Thoth, the Atlantean Priest King. They say that truth is often stranger than fiction. And I think that most of us on this journey can agree with that sentiment. But the one thing I've noticed is as I've been uncovering the secrets of our past, the secrets that the controllers want to hide from us, I realize just how special and how magical human beings are. And the more I dig into these topics, the more it's clear to see what the controllers have actually done. Many people believe that the Emerald Tablets are just a myth, something of ancient folklore coming from Egypt. Many people think of the Egyptian deities as, again, mythology or perhaps demonic. But we know, digging through the missing books of the Bible, that according to the Ak Moses tablet, according to all these missing works, that Yahshua, or what some people say Jesus, although that wasn't his name, Yahshua and Magdalene themselves were not born Jewish, but rather were born Egyptian into the priests and priesthood of Isis. We also know in our studies that simply darkness cannot create anything. Only the light can create. And so everything that the controllers have used to hurt us, it's been inverted from something that was originally ours. We know that the Bible is that we have, the Bible that is copyrighted by the Windsors, the 66 books, is nothing but propaganda. And we know that most of these stories have been changed and inverted. And of course, the teachings of Yahshua were molded and, and into the story of Mithra. We know that the church itself is part of the controllers and that it's used its own teachings to hypnotize people into accepting and worshiping human sacrifice, a blood ritual. Even so far as to giving people communion, which is cannibalism. And the more we study how inverted everything is, we realize that in the battle versus good and evil, the Egyptians were always the good guys, even though in our churches we were taught that they were not. We know that the Egyptian culture is the leftover culture of Atlantis. 
And if we look at the hieroglyphics of the Egyptian art, we see people of all races, all creeds, all backgrounds. We know that our races, our skin color is not really defined by where our ancestors came from on this earth, but rather is just a sign of our galactic heritage. All galactic beings being humanoids that were created within the image of God, a light being, a being that car carries a divine spark. We know that the Atlanteans knew this. We know that in the world of Atlantis, technology was far more advanced than it is now. We also know that according to the true timeline, the fall of Atlantis was the apocalypse. Now, according to Billy Carson, who is a podcaster from the podcast Forbidden Knowledge, he explains that the information in the Emerald Tablets were written for us. That Thoth, this great Atlantean priest king, wrote these things down for our time, not his. And it's taken us many incarnations on this earth to finally remember, after the great flood of Atlantis, who we really truly are. In fact, in many of the uh, information I studied, no one really knows for sure who found the Emerald Tablets, how they were once again revealed to the public. But nonetheless, here they are. But before we get into the writings of the Emerald Tablets in the Halls of Amente, we need to look at Thoth, or Thoth, as some people say. And by looking at Thoth, we have to look at what the mythology says. Yes, we know the mythology is what they teach us in schools. And again, the mythology is what the church has claimed to be demonic. But what's interesting and what you'll see is that Thoth did not consider himself to be a god. In fact, Thoth himself called himself a son of Atlantis. He didn't want people praying to him. He came back to help, to help show people, remind people of who they really are are and who they really were. Now, a lot of times this mythology that's been weaponized against the truth is simply just an allegory, a metaphor for the human condition. You'll see this with Thoth and some of the metaphor around him and why perhaps the moon is associated with Thoth since the moon is the feminine intuitive energy that also guides us into the underworld, the underworld being necessary to live through in order to find the light again. Something we're studying in Return of the Divine Sophia, we know through shadow work that the dark parts of us is where the friction is created and where the friction is created, there can be light. As I keep saying, the more my heart breaks, the more the light can come through. So perhaps Thoth's association with the moon has to do with that element of ourself that is scary, but yet necessary for liberation. So according to Egyptian mythology, Thoth is the god of the moon, sacred texts, the science is magic. He keeps the records of all the deities as the patron of scribes, and he is the master of knowledge. Some mythical stories say that he was born of the lips of Ra, a god without a mother, or that he self-created and lays the cosmic egg that holds all of creation. He created writing, the calendar, and controls all of time and space. Thoth and Ra, Thoth being the moon, Ra being the sun, the yin, the yang of energies within a cosmos. It is also stated that Thoth keeps up with who passes into the afterlife. It is also stated that Thoth protected Isis while she was pregnant and healed Horus's eye that had been damaged by Seth. Now, even though Thoth did not want to be worshipped as a deity himself, there is what, what appears to be remains of a Thoth temple in Hermopolis in northern Egypt. Now, the controllers tell us that this temple was destroyed at the beginning of the early Christian era, which might make some sense. Maybe it wasn't a temple. Maybe it was a school. I don't know. We'll talk about that later in the discussion with Shanti and Mornay and Stephanie. Because again, Thoth himself did not consider him to, see, to be a god. In the Egyptian mythology, he's often depicted as the ibis with the, a, a head of a bird on him. But as you'll see, Thoth himself was a human man, an actual being. Thoth's wife was a woman named Shishat. And she herself has also taken on a goddess-like persona. In fact, in some of these Thoth temples, they see Thoth as being the head of the Ogdon, which was the head of a pantheon of eight different deities, all deities with the male and feminine polarity. But whether or not this was simply a metaphor that got twisted 
or a made up story meant to shine us away from the truth of who we are, we do know from Thoth himself that once again, he did not consider himself to be a deity. Thoth called himself the Atlantean priest king, and he founded a colony in ancient Egypt after the flooding of Atlantis. He often refers to Atlantis as the motherland. Now, I thought it was super interesting that Billy Carson pointed out that these writings of the Emerald Tablets are actually meant for us today. Because we do know, according to a lot of research and according to a lot of these channeled back channels, that those of us who are here on this earth right now were present for the fall of Atlantis, which was the apocalypse. We've been through the fucking ap apocalypse, guys. I don't know why the Christians want to hang on to this idea that the apocalypse hasn't come yet, because hello, that's fantastic news. We've been there. We've done that. We got the t-shirt and we're back again. We know that with this time period, we are mirroring exactly what happened before Atlantis fell. Before Atlantis was Lumeria. Lumeria was the time before conflict, before confusion, meaning that this was the time before polarity. Once polarity entered into the mix, we now have choices to make. At the fall of Atlantis, all the information given to the people was hoarded by one elite group of people. Because they hoarded the information and used it for themselves, it caused destruction. Because vibrationally, if you study the law of one, no planet that serviced to self can make it past fourth density. Only service to others can make it past fourth density. And so Atlantis was destined to fall. Well, here we are again in the same predicament where we have a small group of people who hold all the information and all the knowledge. That's why I think a lot of us have a lot of PTSD from this time because we kind of remember doing this before, but we have amnesia, which we're going to talk about, which is spoken about in the Emerald Tablets. But because there's a slight memory, a slight regression, a, a, an understanding that there's something more to this, we are fighting back like hell. So the fall of Atlantis does not happen again. Now, it is stated on our timeline today that Thoth wrote the Emerald Tablets about 36,000 years ago. I don't know if that timeline is true or not. It's all we have. I'm not, I don't really care. Time is fluid. I don't really care about dates anymore. All that will be revealed when it needs to be revealed. But the truth is that he wrote these tablets. Again, he wrote them after the fall of Atlantis. And he started the writing of the tablets when the water started to recede. Now, let me get this very straight with you guys. We know the story of the Great Flood. This is what I'm talking about. The deluge, the Great Flood that Noah built his ark for. But realistically, scientifically, according to all these different scriptures, Noah and his family were not the only ones to survive the Great Flood. Many people ran to high ground like the Pyramids. Many people ran to high ground here in the Americas like the Appalachian Mountains. And this again comes back to the Merovingians, as we've spoken about, the Magdalene bloodline, because the O negative bloodline, the blood type that I am, is the bloodline of Atlantis. That's why it's so important. And that's why the controllers love the O negative bloodline, because that's the Atlantean bloodline. Hence why to this day, we have a high percentage of O negative people in the Pyramids, as well as amongst Native Americans. Now, this Magdalene story and Yahshua story of passing through the sacred bloodline of Atlantis is going to come into Thoth. Because many people believe that Thoth is actually... Yeshua. I don't know if I believe that or not. Time will tell. Or possibly that Thoth was Yeshua's father. We know that Mary's mother was, our mother Mary was not named Mary. She was Alma Mari. So is it safe to say that maybe Yeshua's father wasn't named Joseph, but rather Thoth? We know that Mary Magdalene was not Mary Magdalene. She was just Magdalene. We know names were changed intentionally to keep us in our amnesia and our confusion. Now, once again, I, I don't know. This is new information for me, too. So I'm going to have to sit with this for a while. But it's very, very interesting because we see when we go through the tablets that all of Yahshua's teachings come from the emerald tablets. It's a direct replica, just like we know that Moses did not receive the Ten Commandments from the mountain. If you still believe that, 
then I got a bridge in London I want to sell you. The Ten Commandments come from the Egyptian Book of the Dead, or as it was called back then, the Egyptian Book of Bringing Forth the Light. Don't believe me? Look it up. Moses stole the Egyptian Book of the Dead. Moses, the name Moses means dark sorcerer. Moses worshipped multiple gods. He was doing black magic against the Egyptians. The Egyptians asked him to leave. And then when they chased him down with their chariots, it's because they wanted their fucking book back. He stole their book. Don't believe me? Look it up. Do your research. Do your research. The Egyptians were the ones who were worshipping one god. One god of light. They were the leftover Atlanteans. This is why the controllers have planted churches everywhere and, and inverted the teachings and, and took these beautiful teachings of Yahshua from the Emerald Tablets and molded them into Mithra's story, making the Egyptians always, always, always the bad guys. When in reality, we are the Egyptians. We, us, the survivors of Atlantis. Now, Thoth himself was the priest king who had conquered death, meaning that he was an immortal. And this is the reality of what we're actually looking at now. We've heard many people say that once we flip timelines, we too will become immortal. That doesn't mean that we're constantly going to be stuck in these bodies. It just means that we're going to get to choose when we come and when we go. We're going to totally understand that the concept of death is nothing but an illusion, but a changeover, a transition into a new life. And this is what Thoth understood. So even though he lived as a mortal being for about 16,000 years after the fall of Atlantis, that does not mean that when he passed away, he actually died. He chose to leave. Now, Thoth ruled a land called Chem. And this is what we now call Egypt. Now, it's interesting. Chem is where we get the word alchemy from. Alchemy, to transmute darkness to light, to transmute lead to gold. This is also the root word of guru, moving darkness to light. So is it safe to say that Thoth himself, this Atlantean king, was like Yahshua and Magdalene and like the Buddha and like my teachers, like their gurus, right? They, they know how to transmute darkness to light and their job, their job isn't to be worshipped by you. Their job is to teach you, to show you how to do this for yourself and to help try to help you remember who you are. You are a children of light. Interesting, in the tablets, they often refer to the children of light, which we know that's what the Essenes meant. The Essenes meant the children of light, aka the priest and priesthood of Isis, E-S-S-E, -S -S -E, being the original spelling of Isis, hence where we get the, the, the state name Tennessee, the country of Isis, where we just happen to have some Isis temples. Now, with this being said, I still am firmly believe that the Egypt that we call Egypt today was not the original Egypt. And we know that through the Emerald Tablets and discoveries of Thoth that he left his mark all over the world. We have markings of Thoth being there and his teachings being there in South and Latin America, as well as Europe. And so this Atlantean teaching really did em envelop the whole world. Now, as we get into the Great Pyramids, we have been told that a pharaoh by the name of Cheops built the Great Pyramids. Now, this is important because allegedly the halls of Amente are under the Great Pyramids of Giza. Now, I have two theories that I'm working with. I have seen proof of these pyramids and these sphinx being here in the southeast of the United States, pictures from the early 1900s of these artifacts that they have since removed or destroyed. I've also seen pictures of the 1900s people have shared of them actually moving artifacts away from their original placement. However, I've, I've also entertained the idea of two different timelines at work. The timelines of the controllers and the timeline of God. And at this point, at this junction, we are at a timeline war. And if the bad guys win, then we're going to be stuck on the timeline that is what we know of today as history. But if the good guys win, if we win this war, then everything will flip and go back to the original timeline. So what's important about the pyramids of Giza is, again, we were taught that someone named Cheops built the pyramids. Now, for a pharaoh who built these massive monuments, we don't know that much about him, which is kind of odd. We do know that he was the second pharaoh in the fourth dynasty and allegedly 
he took the throne at 20 from his dad and allegedly he was, I don't know why I'm saying allegedly, it's not like he's alive today to sue me, but <laughs> allegedly he was um, kind of a tyrant, like kind of a dick um, from what I read. And um, these pyramids we were told were built for to be like these incredible tombs of the pharaohs you know kind of like the, uh, the one of the biggest narcissistic slaps you can put on your country right like not only am i gonna make your life miserable but when i die you're gonna have to look at these big hunking pyramids to remember me by but we now know that that's not what the pyramids were for in fact even the law of one talks about that the law of one well, the raw material, they call themselves the sons and daughters of sorrow because apparently they were a group of higher dimensional beings who came to earth to try to help us and they kind of fucked up. They showed us these shapes, these pyramids to try to explain energy. And of course, the controllers took that and made it their own little pyramid with them on top when really a pyramid is as a harnessing of energy that we all have within us. And that's what they were trying to do. And that is legitimately what I think the pyramids were really for. They were this harnessing of energy and they held like a library of information. But of course, the history books are going to tell you that this this uh, tyrannical king built these these suckers basically as like a mausoleum to the great pharaohs. And this is why I bring this up. Because according to the information on the emerald tablets, it was Thoth who built these pyramids. And again, he built these pyramids as a way to harness all the information from Atlantis, as a way to hold information for us today. Because you see, once the flood happened and Atlantis was wiped out, those who survived went through amnesia. In their survival, in their need to rebuild societies, they went from a super, super, super advanced world and land, more so advanced than we are today, to living back in caves. And so Thoth knew, he knew that it was going to take a while. As we read in the second or third tablets, the key of wisdom, he talks about going through our reincarnations of, of having to be reborn multiple times in each life. We, we, we put information into our conscious bank of remembering just who we are. Now the controllers have set up traps because they want us to remember who we aren't, what we aren't. Our job, as Shanti says, we came back to know who we aren't. And to find out and remember who we are. Now, Thoth being the wise, advanced soul that he was, again, he knew this was going to take time. But as all great enlightened souls know, the soul itself is immortal. Eternity has no ending. And so as painful as it is to watch your family, your kids, your friends go through heartache, that suffering was necessary. The suffering of the fear of death, of mortality, the suffering of, of having polarity, of having to be under a matrix system, a dog ate dog world of betrayal, lies, cheating, all of that until we realize that our own wounds, our own amnesia wounds that have caused these things are what keeping us down at this low vibration. And when we realize that as we're doing with our shadow work challenge, the minute we even just start to realize that we start to rise up in vibration again. And this to me is what's so freaking fascinating because apparently Thoth built the great pyramids of Giza underneath the pyramids was a labyrinth of halls called the halls of Amente. And apparently Thoth put guards in front of all this information, guards that were of the highest priestly order to protect the information. Now, not only is there like a library of, of information down there, but apparently there's also the ancient technology of Atlantis too. Now, my question is, has this technology been found by the bad guys? Are the bad guys using it? Or do the bad guys know what these things are? And so they're just trying to mimic that. I don't know. That's, that's for us to find out later, later down the line. But these priests are hiding this information in what sounds like to me something like Agartha, right? Where they descended into the belly of the earth to protect us from ourselves. And this is what's super fascinating because, you know, some of the mainstream historical websites, when you look into these things, will maybe give you different reasons as to why all of a sudden 10 of the emerald tablets are available. But when you really dig deep into people who really study this stuff from the esoteric side, 
They have no idea who found these ta tablets. All of a sudden, the tablets just appeared. Ten of them just appeared just in time for us to be ready to read them again and understand who we truly are. Now, the interesting thing is that there are two more tablets that we don't have. My question is, are those two other tablets being held back because we're not ready for them yet? Are these two tablets that the controllers have? Is this part of what the war is? I also wonder if the halls of Amente aren't in Egypt as we know it, but maybe here, maybe here in the Southeast. After all, Atlanta is called Atlanta because it, this was one of the capital cities of Atlantis, where the fountain of youth flows through the ground, the sacred springs, at the base of Appalachia, where there were Isis temples. And of course, Appalachia being the oldest mountain chain in the world. The Appalachian mountain ch chain that runs through Washington, D.C., a huge Tartarian city with buildings that have sculpt sculptures of Magdalene inside of them leading all the way up to Ottawa, Canada, where it's a possibility Magdalene herself was buried, as that would have been the original Gaul. And if the halls of Amenti are here in Georgia, is that why such companies like Ted Turner, the world of Coca-Cola Coca Corporation, CNN, the CDC, is that perhaps why they're here? Out of all the places in the world, is that why they're here? And is that why in this so-called civil war, the city of Atlantis burned down? What were they hiding? Now, I don't know if I've mentioned much on this channel about my own um, regressions. I've had some memories come up. And every time I see my sire, higher self, I saw myself with like this emerald pendant. It's almost like it was part of my body. And when I saw that on myself, I didn't, I almost saw it as being like metaphoric. And I kept, every time I would see it in a, in a regression, I immediately just thought the Emerald Tablets, I have to get my hands on the Emerald Tablets. And this has been years now. And I'm just now sitting down and doing this with you guys and reading through these tablets. It's so clear. It's so clear what the answer is. It's what's taught in yoga. It's what's taught in all great spiritual practices. You are the light. You just forgot your light. And Thoth, the great teacher, is here once again to remind you of who you truly are and what you're truly not. Now, this is probably going to be an ongoing series. We are going to be discussing this on Aquarius Rising Africa this morning at 10 a.m. Or excuse me. No, I'm sorry. Time change. It'll be 9 a.m. Eastern Standard Time that we go on live to do this story. But I'm going to leave you here with a reading of the third tablet. I want you to really listen to the words. In this tablet in particular, what is Thoth telling you? Deep in the earth's heart lie the halls of Amenti, far neath the islands of sunken Atlantis, halls of the dead and halls of the living, bathed in the fire of the infinite all. Far in a past time, lost in the space-time, the children of light looked down on the world, seeing the children of men in their bondage, bound by the force that came from beyond. Knew they that only by freedom from bondage could man ever rise from the earth to the sun. Down they descended and created bodies, taking the semblance of man as their own the masters of everything said after their forming. Who are they who were formed from the space dust, partaking of life from the infinite all, living in the world as children of men, yet unlike the children of men. Then for a dwelling place far neath the earth's crust, blasted great spaces they by their power, spaces apart from the children of men, surrounded them by forces and power, shielded from harm, they the halls of the dead. Side by side then, placed they other spaces, filled them with life and with light from above. Builded they then the hall of Amenti, that they might dwell eternally there, 
living with life to eternity's end. Thirty and two were there of the children, sons of light who had come among men, seeking to free from the bondage of darkness those who were bound by the force from beyond. Deep in the halls of life grew a flowing, flaming, expanding, driving backward the night. Placed in the center, a ray of great potence, life-giving, light-giving, feeling the power with all who came near. Placed they around it thrones, two and thirty, placed for each of the children of light. Placed so that they were bathed in the radiance, filled with the life from eternal light. There, time after time, they their first created bodies, so that they might be filled with the spirit of life. One hundred years out of each thousand must the life-giving light flame forth on their bodies, quickening, awakening the spirit of life. There in the circle from eon to eon sit the great masters, living a life not known among men. There in the halls of life they lie sleeping. Free flows their soul through the bodies of men. Time after time, while their bodies lie sleeping, incarnate they in the bodies of men teaching and guiding onward and upward, out of the darkness into the light. There in the hall of life, filled with their wisdom, known not to the races of men, living forever neath the cold, fire of life sit the children of light. Times there are when they awaken, come from the depths to be lights among men, infinite, they among finite men. He who by progress has grown from darkness, lifted himself from the night into light. Free is he made of the halls of Amente, free of the flower of light and of life. Guided he then by wisdom and knowledge, passes from men to the master of life. There he may dwell as one with the masters, free from the bonds of the darkness of night. Seated within the flower of radiance sit seven lords from space-time above us helping and guiding through infinite wisdom the pathway through the time of children of men. Mighty and strange they, veiled with their power, silent all-knowing, drawing the life force, different yet one with the children of men. Yea, different and yet one with the children of light. Custodians and watchers of the forces of man's bondage, ready to lose when the light has been reached. First and most mighty sits the veiled presence, Lord of Lords, the infinite nine. Over the other from each, the Lord of the cycles. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, each with his mission, each with his powers, guiding, directing the destiny of men. There they sit, mighty and potent, free of all time and space. Not of this world they, yet akin to it, elder brothers they, of the children of men, judging and weighing, they with their wisdom, watching the progress of light among men. There before them I was led by the dweller, watched him blend with one from above. Then from he came forth a voice saying, Great art thou, Thoth, among men of men, from henceforth of the halls of Amenti. Master of light among children of men, taste not death except as thou wilt it. Drink thou of life to eternity's end. Henceforth forever is life, thine for the taking. Henceforth is death at the call of thy hand. Dwell here or leave here when thou desireth, free as a mente to the son of man. Take thou up life in what form thou desireth, children of light that has grown among men. Choose thou thy work, for all should muster labor. Never be free from the pathway of light. One step thou hast gained on the long pathway upward, infinite now in the morning light. Each step thou taketh but heightens the mountain, all of thy progress but lengthens the goal. Approach ye ever the infinite wisdom, ever before thee recedes the goal. Free are ye now, of the halls of Amenti, to walk hand in hand with the lords of the world. One in one purpose working together, bring of light to the children of men. Then from his throne came one masters, taking my hand and leading me onward. Through all the halls of the deep hidden land, led he me through the halls of Amenti, 
showing the mysteries that are known not to man. Through the darkened passage, downward he led me into the halls where the sight, the dark death, vast as space like the gray hall before me, walked by darkness yet filled with light. Before me arose a great th throne of darkness, veiled on it sat a figure of night. Darker than darkness sat the great figure, dark with the darkness not of the night. Before it then paused the master speaking, the word that brings about life saying, O master of darkness, guide of the way of from life unto life. Before thee I bring a son of morning, touch him not ever with the power of night. Call not his flame to the darkness of night. Know him and see him, one of our brothers, lifted from the darkness into the light. Release thou his flame from its bondage. Free, let it flame through the darkness of night. Raised in the hand of the figure, forth came a flame and grew clear and bright. Rolled back swiftly the curtain of darkness, unveiled the hall from the darkness of night. Then grew in the great space before me, flame after flame from the veil of the night. Uncounted millions leaped they before me, some flaming forth as of flowers of fire. Others there were that shed a dim radiance, flowing but faintly from out of the night. Some there were that faded swiftly, others that grew from small spark of light, each surrounded by its dim veil of darkness, yet flaming with light that could never be quenched. Coming and going like fireflies in springtime, filled they with space, with light, and with life. Then spoke a voice, mighty and solemn, saying, These are lights that are souls among men, growing and fading, existing forever, changing yet living, through death into life. When they have bloomed into flower, reach the zenth of growth in their life swiftly then i send my veil of darkness shrouding and changing to new forms of life steadily upward through the ages growing expanding yet into another flame light lightning and darkness with yet great power quenched yet unquenched by the veil of night so grows the soul of man ever upward quenched yet unquenched by the darkness of night i death come and yet i remain not for life eternal exists in all. Only an obstacle, I in the pathway, quick to be con conquered by the infinite light. Awaken, O flame that burns ever inward, flame forth and conquer the veil of the night. Then in the midst of the flames, in the darkness grew there one that drove forth the night, flaming, expanding ever bright until the last was nothing but light. Then spoke my guide, the voice of the master, see your own soul as it grows in the light. Free now forever from the Lord of the night. Forward he led me through my many great spaces filled with the mysteries of the children of light. Mysteries that man may never yet know of until he too is a son of the light. Backward then he led me into the light of the hall of the light. Knelt I then before the great masters, lords of all from the cycles above. Spoke he them with words of great power, saying, Thou hast been made free of the halls of Amenti. Choose thou thy work amongst the children of men. Then I spoke, O great master, let me be a teacher of men, leading them onward and upward until they too are lights among men. Freed from the veil of the night that surrounds them, flaming with light that shall shine amongst men. Smoke to me with the voice, go as yet ye will. So be it decreed, master are ye among your destiny, free to take or reject at will. Take ye the power, take ye the wisdom, shine as a light among the children of men. Upward then led me by the dweller, dwelt I among the children of men teaching and showing some of my wisdom, son of the light, a fire among men. Now again I tread the path downward, seeking the light in the darkness of night. Hold ye and keep ye, preserve my record. Guide shall it be to the children of men. And this is from the third tablet, the key of wisdom, from the emerald tablets written by the Atlantean priest king, 